Do you consider yourself a sales beginner? Or maybe you're not a beginner, but you're still not at the level that you'd like to be. Maybe you've been at this for a while, but you still find yourself consistently struggling to get to that level where you feel like, wow, I've really got this under control. If so, then you are in the right place. Because there are some fundamental strategies that you can implement to go from beginner, and not just to intermediate, but to expert in very short order. The key is bypassing that long learning curve and instead going from where you are now to that next level, which is a huge step above where most people are. So in this video, I'm going to show you Sales 101, 11 must-know strategies all beginners must know. Check it out. Number one, build the foundation for selling. Now what this means is you cannot just figure it out on your own. Salespeople that are at the top of their game do not figure it out on their own. They find a system, they find an approach, and they build that foundation. It's like learning guitar. What's the foundation of guitar? Learning the basic chords, understanding how to hold the guitar, and you have to have that foundation in order to get to that next level to be just absolutely crushing the guitar. The same goes for sales. You need to have that foundation, that systematic approach. How are you starting your calls? What types of questions are you asking? How are you demonstrating insight? How are you presenting in a way that's solving to their challenges? Knowing all of that, so that way you can continue to build upon the foundation and not just kind of figure it out as you go. Number two, be okay with messing up. This is so important. If you are afraid of messing up in a selling situation, you are going to be paralyzed by fear. And that fear is going to be all over your face. And when you get in front of a prospect, they're going to be immediately uncomfortable. You have to be totally and completely okay with messing up any sales opportunity. Of course, that's not the goal, that's not what you want to happen, but you have to be okay with it. You have to give yourself permission to mess up any selling situation at the earlier part of your learning curve. Because if you're not, you're immediately going to freeze up and do things that are going to ultimately hurt the sale. The more you are okay with messing up, the better off you'll be, the more comfortable you'll be, the more willing you will be to try new things, which is exactly where you have to be. Number three, pissing people off is part of the game. If you are terrified of pissing someone off, then sales is not for you. You have to be willing to do that. Now, it's not, again, that your goal is to piss someone off, of course not, but sales is about pushing people to their limits. It's about helping them see what they need to see. And sometimes they don't wanna drink the medicine that they know they have to take. And you have to be that doctor who is willing to tell them and show them exactly what they need. And in some cases, you might frustrate some people. And that is okay. It is all part of the game. Number four, focus on them, not you. This is probably the single biggest beginner mistake in sales, is that when we get in front of a prospect, we focus completely on ourselves. We talk about our company, we talk about our product or service, we talk about our track record, we talk about ourselves as opposed to digging into them to demonstrate what's going on in their lives, what's going on in their business, and understanding by asking really good questions about where they are exactly, what are their key challenges, what are their objectives, what are their goals. That's how you focus on them, not you. Number five, create your lead gen machine. This is so critical for anyone who's getting up and running in sales. You must have a lead generation process in place. If you do not have a way to consistently generate leads, then you are never going to make it in sales. You need to have enough appointments in your calendar in order to hit your sales goals. And if you don't have that, then you must get that in place. Now, I've made a ton of other training videos on how to build your lead generation machine, 
on all of that stuff, but you must have that in place. If you don't, you simply cannot increase your close rate enough with a tiny number of opportunities in order to hit your sales goals. You must have your lead generation machine. Number six, discover their challenges. Now I already hinted at this idea, but you need to become really good at being a detective or being a doctor and understanding what their challenges are. It doesn't mean that you go in and tell them what their challenges are. Instead, you need to discover through really effective questioning to understand what's going on in their world. You've got to be able to get them talking. And once you get them talking, you've got to be able to dig deep enough to really understand what's going on so that way you can demonstrate whether you can solve their challenges or not. Number seven, follow up is junk. If you're saying my biggest problem is follow up or I have a problem with follow up, then you are in trouble because you shouldn't be following up on your prospects at all. There should always be a clear next step coming out of every selling interaction. So if you're struggling with follow-up right now, you need to completely change what you're doing in that meeting in order to keep that sale on track. Because follow-up as a concept in sales is complete and total bunk. That's not where you want to be focused on. You want to be focused on what you're doing in that meeting to get that prospect to say, yeah, I'm happy to schedule a next meeting. That's how you keep sales on track and that's ultimately how you get to the close of the sale. Number eight, be cautious of who you listen to. Now this is just good old fashioned beginner advice for learning any skill. Do you want to learn from someone who doesn't sell, who has really no idea what they're doing? That's what so many of us do when it comes to learning to sell. We learn from just another guy or gal in the office or we watch some random YouTube video from someone who really doesn't sell. You need to make sure that you are getting advice from someone that you actually can trust. Be cautious of who you listen to. I can tell you that when I first was learning to sell, I was taking advice from anyone who would tell me. And as a result, I was all over the place. And until I finally learned a process from some people who were true experts, that is when things came together. Number nine, make it a big game. Selling ultimately is a game. It's a blood sport, it's a contact sport, but it's a lot of fun if you're doing it right. But you've got to see it as a game. If you're taking this stuff really personally, you're not going to make it. You've got to allow yourself to have some losses. You've got to allow yourself to learn from every single selling interaction. That's how we make it a game and that's how we make it so much more fun. Number 10, don't sweat the small stuff. If you lose a sale, if you screw up on a cold call, if you make some kind of a mistake, you send them the wrong email, don't sweat it, just learn from it. But if you are just breaking into sweats or in hives as a result of some small mistake you've made, you are not going to get there in the long term. This is a long term game. Don't sweat those little things. You know what? If you send someone the wrong email or you use the wrong name or you do something that just completely screws up a sale, just learn from it. Don't sweat those little details. Number 11, no's are a good thing. A no is a good thing. What's not a good thing is, hey, let me think about this. Or, hey, can you get back to me in two weeks? Or, hey, love what you shared with me, really gonna have to talk this over, can we get back to you in a month? That's bad, but no, this isn't a good fit, is a perfectly acceptable outcome. The more comfortable you are with the word no as a possible outcome, the more likely you are to get a yes. This is one of those counter, just magical pieces of advice that I wish I had learned earlier on in my selling career because when you are trying to only get a yes from a prospect, you're putting on tremendous pressure and as a result, that prospect is actually not more likely to tell you no because they don't want to disappoint you. So instead, they're just going to say what they think you want to hear, which is, hey, this is great. Let me get back to you in a couple of weeks. And most salespeople love to hear that. But the reality is, is that a no is actually a great thing. Get very comfortable with winning sales and losing sales. But what you want to avoid is that stuff in the middle, which is full of just unknown, wishy-washy uncertainty. 
So there is Sales 101, 11 must-know strategies all beginners must know. And if you enjoyed this video, then I have an awesome free training on the data-driven approach to closing more sales in today's marketplace. Just click right here to get registered instantly. Seriously, just click right here. This is an in-depth training that will help you close more sales at higher prices, all while generating more meetings. Also, if you got some value, please like this video below on YouTube and be sure to subscribe to my channel by clicking my face that should be right about here to get access to a new video just like this one each week.